All right, so I have been in a Magic Realm state of mind for a little bit, uh, which I'm pretty sure was a B-side to a Billy Joel uh, single. Um, and so I've got my second game queued up, <clears throat> and the second game is uh, this little cohort here. We got the Amazon Captain Druid and Pilgrim. So very, very different than the first cohort, uh, which was all pretty, pretty heavy hitters. Uh, this one does have two really consistently high scores for me, the Amazon and the Captain. Um, the Druid and the Pilgrim a little less so. <laughs> the Pilgrim I particularly have a hard time sort of getting to work. That he does occasionally have his moments. Um, so we shall see how this goes. I am sort of predicting that the captain sort of takes it away. Uh, because captain just has, I think, huge advantages over a lot of characters in <clears throat> the quest game for certain. But even in general, I think in Magic Realm, the captain's a pretty, pretty solid character just in terms of his ability to hire uh folks so so we'll we'll see um i started him at the soldiers instead of the guard just because it just was more central gave better access i think to to more more sites more quickly um and the soldiers are ultimately cheaper than the guard although obviously not as absolutely sturdy but they're simply more of them we shall see. He can still get to the guard. You have to go through uh, the ruin um, or the borderland to do it. Uh, otherwise, you can see actually, actually everything's pretty close in terms of all the garrisons are reasonably close to one another. This would actually be a map that I would consider taking pub crawl on if I if I could. Um. The Druid here, we got Summon Animal and Nudge, so sort of looking to be a little bit aggressive as the Druid. Um, and the Pilgrim took what I consider to be the traditional Small Blessing. I'm not a big fan of Small Blessing. I think, I think you wait on it a lot more than you think you will wait on it. And then all the other sort of abilities of Small Blessing, it's just too random to, to rely on. Um... You know, it's like sitting and going, well, I'm going to cast Transform on myself as the Magician, you know, and that's great, but but how many days do you waste trying to get, you know, trying to get something ideal? And I, I think, I think, though, again, the Pilgrim has the better chance because the ideal thing is 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 a six. Um, it's still only a 30% chance, and you could easily spend one or two or three days just casting that with, with no good effect. So, um, but I did take it, and we're going to go with that, and I think the Pilgrim is going to take a quick view into the surrounding tiles, see if there's anything that he can swipe, hopefully the altar or the shrine pop early, he can loot those, drag those back, hire himself a knight or two, and rule the battlefield vicariously through the knight. Like I said, Druid's going to be a little bit aggressive on his uh, uh, casting, using Nudge to get a, uh, uh, a beneficial trans, uh, uh, summon animal. And then, of course, the Amazon is going to use her mobility to scour the board quickly and, you know, and score points by just getting to sites and getting to, to stuff, uh, getting to, to her cards quickly in the captain. Probably hires the soldiers or the guard uh, to wreak havoc on the middle of the board there. Uh, let's get setup done. Um, yeah, let's get setup done for everybody. That'll be this video's sort of uh, a point here. So we're going to get setup done. One, two, three, four. Everybody gets three cards. And of course, a chance to turn cards in. Got to take the second round of cards, whatever you get. Uh, 
but you know you can you can turn things in one time so let's see what the amazon ends up with she ends up with a white source windfall and a gold source well obviously she's ditching white and gold source those are pointless to her so she turns those two in and grabs these two monster lure and explore the cliffs uh well obviously windfall she's just gonna sit on that that's an easy one five bucks is pretty good monster lore is good and explore the cliffs is good although it does depend on where the hell the cliffs are for her the cliffs are over here uh, i mean it's through the deep woods up here she could probably handle that um so there you go so that's hers done the captain gets curse breaker tiny hut and explore the borderland he doesn't really care about any visitors i suppose we'll take explore the borderland uh but those two are going to go away and we get locksmith and guide so explore borderland Okay, so let's take a quick look at where Locksmith is. I think it's in the High Pass in 4. High Pass 4. So we're going to put one of these uh, in the High Pass in 4. Uh, the captain's pretty darn close, so that's a good, again, a good point for him. Uh, Explore Borderland, also pretty close. And that's a good one. That's 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 two points, ten bucks. So I think both of those are pretty. Uh, I think both sets have been pretty kind to our first two characters here. Pilgrimage for the druid, chapel, altar, shrine, or monastery. Chapel. Altar, shrine, or monastery. Well, the chapel is reachable very easily. And then, of course, it's just whether or not you can find one of the second ones. So I think definitely that is takeable. Rescue is nice in the sense that you can choose where it, where it is once you get some monsters out the door. End of phase in both Caves 3 and Cavern 3. That I don't love. Um, those are pretty pretty far away from each other ultimately um delver is going to give you extra phase in the caves right yeah that's great though but um but by then you've seen the caves <laughs> so maybe it's not worth it i'm gonna ditch delver if he'd have taken uh torch uh torchbearer then i think i'd have kept it and he also gets guide. So pilgrimage. Uh, rescue. And guide. Done, done, and done. And he is done with his setup. For the pilgrim, find weapon. Thief. And rescue. Find weapon in slither. Thief and rescue. So he's unfriendly to the company in the bash cars. Find weapon strangely good for for the pilgrim. And the main reason is his weapon sucks. Uh, the staff, but he has that great M2 chit. And so if he could just find like even an ox there, um, or that, I said that M2 is really good. You could choose any L or M melee weapon. 
Uh, so like a mace. Mace doesn't suck. Although, again, you might as well take an axe if you're going to be the pilgrim. Since you're going to be using um, mostly... I mean, so the axe is good if you want to use your heavy attack shit. Or the mace, I should say. Uh, where's the mace? The mace is good if you want to use heavy attacks because this M3 side is great. The axe is good if you're going to use your your uh, medium, uh, your M2. Because you can do heavy damage with an M2. Uh, at a two speed, that's pretty darn good. You can do, uh, uh, you know, so I don't know. I don't know which one of those I would take. But anyway. All he needs to do is find a slither. Rescue, again, is good because you can choose where it appears if you get monsters out the door. I'm not super a fan of Thief for him. It requires the company of the Bash cars to, to, to appear. That's, I think, the one I will delete uh, from his list. Plus, he's the Pilgrim, right? He's a holy guy. Locate the Vault. Yeah, I see, you know, so there you go. So those are the three cards for the Pilgrim. I, I don't think those are too bad. I think everybody has a, a decent set of cards. Uh, looks like we're going to take our three events, and then we're going to pack this one away until later this evening. Peddler appears in a random clearing. The Wood Sprite appears in the Deep Woods, and the Druid appears in a random clearing. So... Uh, Peddler, Druid, Wood Sprite. So we got three characters there. The Peddler is going to appear in a dwelling, random dwelling. I'm sorry. So we'll, the Peddler appears in the chapel. So Peddler in the chapel. Uh, we draw the the extra treasures, and we draw four of them. The peddler has these for four times their normal cost. He has the amulet, uh, the shoes of stealth, the elusive cloak, and the royal scepter first person to buy something at four times the cost gets a victory point from the peddler there's no haggling with him he just is what he is he am what he am deep wood six is the wood sprite and the druid appears in a random clearing what do we got here? Ruins 4. So sort of interesting. I mean, those are crappy for the people in the inn. I think I don't think they have a good chance. I think, I think the captain grabs the sprite pretty easily. No one's going to grab the peddler until you get some cash because that, that is a steep, steep cost. Um, steep cost there. <clears throat> uh, the druid, you got to bring a potion to him. The, uh, the power move would be buying the amulet. Anything that is a discard to is effectively a potion. So the amulet, bring the amulet to the druid, buy it for 20, get a point there, and then get a point at the druid. Done. Um, and of course, both the wood sprite and the druid allow you to get a spell. So even the fighters could get in on the spell. Which is a good two points. I, I had no one learn a spell last game. And I had, you know, I had the sorcerer who should have learned a spell. Uh, the sorcerer has a hard time, though, I find. Because he has to find a scroll or a book. Uh, whereas a lot of the other folks here, um, you know, the pilgrim can learn at the, at the altar. The druid can learn at the shrine. Or no, other way around. Pilgrim can learn at the shrine. The druid can learn at the altar. So, so there you go. 
The only problem with the fighters learning a spell is you have to convert two chits to use it. What the hell chits do you convert? Don't know. I'd probably pick these M4s because I have enough of them. Uh, the Amazon's a little better because her chits are a little better generally. Uh, I might pick an M3 and an M4. But again, ooh, that's that's dicey. But yeah, I, I think I, I think I might. Um, so there you go. Uh, those are our that's our starting setup. Um, I don't think it's a bad setup. I think I think the map is interesting. It's mostly open, with the caveat that the caves are sort of out of the way. Uh, uh, mostly, you know, uh, and the board, the Borderland X is sort of a weird gate. Some, some, uh, some games, uh, just because these three caves are, and this, this secret passage is sort of awkward. And then, you know, if you get gummed up, like let's say you draw the Lost City or something, and there's, you know, a half a dozen monsters in there too, uh, it, it, the Borderlands can gum up uh, the entire board. And the board is sort of cut in half in the sense that, um, you know, the quickest way to the guard would be through the borderland. But you could go across the ledges and then around through the ruin and, and so on and so forth. So I think it's an interesting board. I think a lot of action will happen on this left-hand side first um, before you get to the right-hand side. That's just me. So we will see. Um We'll probably try to get in a week or two uh, tonight. And that's it. I will talk to you all later. Have a good one. Um, looking forward to it. We'll see what happens with this uh, with this crew. Two, two strong fighters, two mages slash, you know, the pilgrim being sort of a middle ground, which I usually have a hard time making work. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm thinking pilgrim wins this one. By 20 points. No. Uh, yeah, we'll 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 see what happens. Have a good one, guys.